Now we want to look at some limits that involve rational expressions, and I have this little theorem over here that we're going to use that says if y equal f of x is a rational function, then the limit as x goes to a of f of x is equal to f of a as long as f of a is defined. So what that means is when we go to evaluate these limits right here, we can simply substitute this number in for x to get that limit as long as this expression right here is defined for that value of x. So let's go take a look at our first one right here as x goes to 4 of x squared minus 4 over 3x minus 6. Well, this expression right here is defined when x is equal to 4, so I'll just substitute it in. So this is going to be equal to 4 squared minus 4, all divided by 3 times 4, minus 6. So what do we have? 16 minus 4, that's going to be 12, divided by 12 minus 6, which is going to be 6, so that's equal to 2. So the limit as x goes to 4 of this expression turns out to be 2 because of this theorem right here. This theorem tells us that we can use substitution on a problem like this as long as this rational expression is defined for this value of x right here. Okay, here's the same expression, exactly the same expression. Let's see what happens as x goes to 0. Well, as x goes to 0, this expression is defined at x equals 0, so again, I could just use substitution. So I'm going to say this is 0 squared minus 4, divided by 3 times 0 minus 6. So what do I get? 0 squared minus 4 is negative 4. 3 times 0 is 0, minus 6 is negative 6, so I end up with 2 thirds. So this limit right here, this expression, will, get, um, will go towards 2 thirds as x goes towards 0. Okay, let's try this expression right here as x goes to 2 of the same expression, okay? Well, my problem is this now. When I substitute in x equal 2, right here I get 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4, which is 0. So this numerator is going towards 0. And as x goes towards 2, this denominator, 3 times 2 is 6, minus 6, that goes towards 0. So I end up with an expression of the form 0 over 0, that's called an indeterminate form. I don't know what that is. I'm going to have to use something else to be able to evaluate this limit. So what I want to do next is go to um, using a little technology to see if we can get kind of an intuitive feel for what's going on here. Let's take a look. Okay, so we can use this spreadsheet to get a little more intuitive idea of what these limits look like. So let's go over here to this, and I'm going to evaluate my first limit. I'm going to let x be equal to 4. Over here in this cell, I want to put my formula x squared minus 4 over 3x minus 6. So I'm going to bring down a little calculator here. So the contents of this cell are going to be equal to, I'm going to put in parentheses here, the contents of this cell, and then I use this symbol right here to square those contents. Subtract 4, now I'll close the parentheses, that's my numerator, divided by my denominator, I'll use parentheses, 3 times the contents of this cell, subtract 6, close the parentheses, okay. All right, so there I have that expression, uh, x squared minus 4 over 3x minus 6 in this cell, and its value is based on the contents of this cell. Okay, what I want to do next is go to the cell just before this and say that those contents are equal to the contents of this cell minus 0.1. And then I'll take that and drag it up here. And so I can see I, now I have x going from 3 to 4 in increments of 0.1. All right, let's see what happens to our formula when we do that. So I'll drag this up here. And you can see that f of x goes from 1.6667 to 1.9667. And then, of course, it's 2 at that value. But this right here, this little sequence, tells you what the limit is, or what, the, what this expression f of x is going towards, and it looks like it's going towards 2. All right, let's go over here and do the same thing. I'm going to say the contents of this cell are equal to the contents of that cell, plus 0.1. So here I have 4.1. Let's drag that down here. And now I see I have x going from 5 down to 4 in increments of 0.1. Let's see what our formula looks like here. And it looks like f of x goes from 2.3333 down to 
2.0333 and it looks like it's approaching 2. All right, what I want to do is make a little bit finer division here. So I'm going to go to this row right here and I'm going to insert another row above that. And then I'm going to insert another row. In this cell right here, I'm going to say its contents are equal to the contents of this cell minus 0 0.001. So 3.999. Now I'm going to go to this cell. Its contents will be equal to the contents of this cell minus 0.01. So I've got a little finer division. Now I go 3.9, 3.99, 3.999. I can get as close as I want to 4 here by doing this kind of thing. And then I can go over here and see what my function values look like. And you can see it really looks like that function is going towards 2, regardless of the fact that at 4 it is 2. All right, let's do the same thing down here. Let's go in and uh, I'm going to insert a row above that. Very good. Insert another row. And here I want to say that the contents of this cell are equal to the contents of this cell plus 0 0.001. And the contents of this cell will be equal to the contents of this cell plus 0 0.01. Okay, so I've got a little bit finer division right here. Let's go and see what our function values look like. So you see, I can just keep doing this, and you, you, you can see that as x goes towards 4 from above here, and we get real fine divisions, that it really does look like f of x is going towards 2. All right, let's go to our second limit. I'll take this cell, and instead of 4, I'll put in 0. Everything is all set up, so now x goes from negative 1 to 0 and from 1 down to 0, and you can see what f of x does. It looks like it's going to this number right here, which is 2 thirds. So that's exactly what we got when we evaluated that limit. Let's go down to our last limit right here, and instead of 0, I'm going to put in 2. And what happens is my function itself is undefined when x is 2, but look, I can see that that function is going towards a certain number as x goes towards 2 from below, and that f of x is going towards that same number as x goes to 2 from above, and it looks like that number is going to be 1 and 1 third. So our spreadsheet tells us that this limit does exist, even though as x goes to 2, this numerator and this denominator both go to 0, so I have a kind of form 0 over 0, which I'm going to call an indeterminate form. I don't know exactly what that is. But I want to be able to show that this limit exists also just using algebra right here and not having to go to that spreadsheet. So what I'm going to do is just simply simplify this expression by factoring the numerator, x plus 2 times x minus 2, factoring the denominator, 3 times x minus 2, and dividing out that common factor, x minus 2. Now, is it okay to divide out that common factor? It is as long as x is not 2, because when x is 2, that's 0 and that's 0, I'd be dividing the numerator and denominator by 0. But the limit as x goes to 2 means that x is never 2. This just means that x gets closer and closer to 2, and you're looking at where this expression goes. So, in fact, I can do this division right here because I know in this sense, when I'm working with an expression like this, x is not going to be 2. Well, that tells me then that this limit is going to be the same as the limit as x goes to 2 of x plus 2 over 3. Now, this limit I can evaluate because this rational expression is defined when x is equal to 2. So I sim simply substitute using this theorem right here. 2 plus 2 divided by 3. 4 over 3, which is 1 and 1 third, which is exactly the same number that we got when we did this using the spreadsheet. So this expression right here, that rational expression, and this rational expression right here, they are the same everywhere except when x is equal to 2. This expression is undefined when x is equal to 2. This expression right here is 4 thirds when x is equal to 2. So they're the same everywhere except at x equal 2. And because it's everywhere except x equal 2, that means that I can do this little simplification right here because the limit as x goes to 2 means that x is never going to be 2. It just gets closer and closer to 2. 
So a couple different ways to look at this, one using a spreadsheet, get kind of an intuitive idea of what's going on, and then do the algebra this way to end up with the same result.